Taylor Brands is a proud sponsor of The Quest. For a complete business builder to start, manage, and grow your business, visit taylorbrands.com. Quest season two, not for nothing. Take number three. Yo, Maxi from Naptown came up with it in Cleveland. Was grabbing nets, now smacking backboards, my achievement. Till I come through Duncan. Timothy, know what I'm finna do so I know how it's finna be? The pain is poetic, we write about it like similes. Don't act like you love me behind my back, be an enemy. Cause those are the type of things that mess up championship energy. This special is a wet dream, don't mess up this memory. Been rapping six days straight, it ain't even been a week. Another 24 hours, think I'm in my fourth hour. Put your ears in the music, all you hear is more fire. Shout out online shoppers in the in-store bars. Yeah. Maxi, from Naptown. I'm a musician first and foremost. Been doing music since I graduated from uh, North Central High School. It's just a passion that I have. I've always kind of been like hand to hand with everything that I've done from uh, me just out getting people to support my music. Being a musician is kind of hard to get support if you're not already nationally known. Uh, and I kind of took uh, the things that I've learned from being a musician and I amplified it with the clothing. Nap or nothing was just a phrase, something I was jotting down. I was coming up with some different logos I wanted to put on a shirt. And that was just one that I put on a shirt and it kind of stuck. People kind of supported it a little bit more than I thought they would. I'm out the trunk, I'm pulling up at shows. I'm uh, making a living how I can. This is you reaching out on social media via Instagram, via Facebook. This is via text. Uh, for your size and I'm pulling up on you. This is me whipping that box out at Music Monday, uh, setting those clothes up on that table and uh, people supporting and I'm leaving out with an empty box or a semi-empty box. This is me pulling up uh, just to get my hair cut and this is a lifestyle that I'm living by so I have the merch in the truck. One of my good friends, Daniel, he had a location inside of Lafayette Square Mall, and uh, him and his team, they were doing things out the back, but he had a front that was open, and uh, he knew we were working with the heat press, and I was printing my things up on the spot for people, and he just, uh, he gave me the option to work out the front, and I, was, and I, took, I took him up on it. Maybe a year later, he ended up moving out, and they end up asking me did I did I want to take over the lease and and I did. 
we were at, I don't want to call it a dead mall, but it's, it wasn't the most popping location in Indianapolis. Uh, we didn't have the most racks on the on the floor. We didn't have the most clothes on the wall, but the support was in the building. The people were in the store. Uh, that's when I knew, I felt like we had something small that could potentially grow to something greater. Casablanca, chocolate baklava, come check my posture, but don't test my patience, that came from my doctor, you should stop, this ain't Goldilocks, this ain't Candy Pop, kept a bundle in my Nike sock, now we off the block, wanna flex, get your engine checked, there's pressure on your neck, see these beams at your head and chest, and not just for a check, they say I'm nice, and I pay the price, then I pay respect, at my best, it was the alphabet, with all the word I get, on my dog. One thing about Maxi is that he's gonna rep Indianapolis no matter where he is and what he does. His artistry, whether it's through graphic design, whether it's through his music, whether it's through the realm of his business, not for nothing, is all built around the Indianapolis culture. And I'm excited to learn more about his story and what mission and quest he's on currently to scale his business and the things that he's aiming to do in the community. <laughs> What's up, brother? Cool, man. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Good to hey, see man, you. Hey, man, come on. It's a great day to be alive, fam. Yeah, man. It's good. So, so this is where it all takes place, man. It is. Yeah, man. So I've been doing some research on your entire journey. I loved, I love what you're building, man. I want to dive deeper into your projects, the mission that you're working towards, and how you're moving the culture forward, man. Let's do it. So tell me, man, you born and raised in Indianapolis, right? Mm -hmm. Like, tell me, yeah. where does that pride for that town come from? Just, it, it makes you feel good to be from here. Uh, the journey that I've been on, uh, the success, the blessings, yeah, uh, all of the above make me proud to be a, a, a huger. Uh, I remember getting on a plane my first time when I was like, 20, 21 years old, traveling the country and coming back home feeling like, there's no place like Naptown though. No matter how much fun, no matter how rejuvenating vacations can be, is nothing like Indianapolis. And that's why it's not for nothing. That's why I rep it to the fullest. It's home, it's the backyard, it's where my family is, it's, uh, it's where my future will be. Uh, I'm always gonna uh, do national things and be a national guy, but I'm just local to the core for sure. That's a good. Yeah, so it started off West Side Indianapolis, right? Lafayette Square. 3919 and Lafayette Road. That's the address, right? Yeah. That's where it all began. Yes. And it began as what the industry would call like a pop up shop, where you came into another brand's space and then you utilized their space to build your brand, Correct. right? Now, if memory serves me correctly, you started off with one shelf, right? Yeah, it was like rack. one rack, one box, a box full of clothes that was enough to fit on one rack. So so, so take me to like where your mental space is at, right? In that moment, as you're presented with this opportunity and how are you able to maximize that opportunity and then create not for nothing and what it is now? I guess I just need an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and that's what presented itself. So. Um, I had a few customers and those few customers grew to a few more. Uh, we were doing heat press. So we, I was printing up clothes for people right on the spot. What you need? What size you wear? What color would you like? Okay, give me 15, 20 minutes. I had it ready for you here in a second. Mm. Printing up on demand kind of built up. 
uh, the things that we had going on there. I had a bunch of uh, clothing hustlers in the building under one roof. We all had the same goal, same mission, and it just kept growing and growing and expanding. And next thing you know, we had a few more racks instead of just one rack. Yeah, so like break down, what are like the strategies that you're implementing to create like a loyal fan base, right? Because Napa or Nothing is a stable here in the city of Indianapolis, right? It's a place where people come. Right now we're in Mass Ave, downtown Indianapolis. People can come here and get apparel and gear that's gonna represent the city. But that doesn't happen overnight, right? There's some groundwork that you put in to your point, like you were hustling, you were grinding, you were putting in work to get the brand to what it is now. What are Correct. some of those practical things that you're doing? Uh, Conversating with the customer, making sure uh, I build rapport, build rapport with the community, know what they like, uh, continue to be as tasteful as possible, know what they're coming to Lafayette Square Mall for. It's a shoe, shoe location, they're coming to get fresh. I want to have something that's going to match what the people are coming for. So yeah. making a lot of pieces that go with a lot of retros, a lot of shoes, uh, sweatsuits, uh, t-shirts, caps, everything that match something that's uh what people are coming there for and it just kept growing from there uh being strategic on uh marketing with things online uh so just using our social media platform uh to the best of our capabilities yeah. and word of mouth you know so yeah we're grateful yeah like so speaking of social media are there any like strategies that you're leveraging to kind of help build awareness around not for nothing as you're using different platforms on social media? Uh, we're using uh, our videographers and photographers, yeah. uh, models, uh, product shots, things of that nature to help with the uh, leveraging our social media. Uh, we also are looking for help as well because I think that's one of the, uh, I, I feel like the word of mouth uh, and the foot traffic is there, but we also are looking to level up with the, our online presence because I feel like that's where things are going right now. Yeah. the digital world, but I'm just st still and definitely grateful for the foot traffic that we got at Lafayette Square Mall and that we get here, yeah. but uh, it's going digital and uh, I'm kind of happy to be in that space as well. You bring up an interesting point, Maxie, right? Like the difference between having a brick and mortar and then an e-commerce online store. What would you say has been some of the advantages of having a brick and mortar space, a physical space where customers can come in and patronize your products, your apparel and your merchandise? You get to make your own rules. Mm. That's huge. Uh, you set the times when you open the store. Uh, you can paint it and organize and make it as artful as you would like, yeah. as tasteful as you want. Uh, I get to dictate the brands that are in the shop. Uh, we help push the culture forward right here downtown on Mass Ave. I think those are all benefits. The support okay. is priceless. I always tell people support can be you just coming in the door. You don't never have to financially spend money with us to support us. There's different forms of support. So any form of support is a uh, is greatly appreciated. Explain to me, like what are you doing to create a memorable customer experience for everybody that walks through those doors here? When they come in here, uh, good music, smells good, it's fresh. I want to build that uh, immediately as soon as they enter. Customer service hits them right in the face. Mm -hmm. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Napa or Nothing Shop. Everything in here is made by someone from Indianapolis. If you would like help with anything, just let us know. Then give them their distance, let them shop. We rearrange the shop quite often to keep it fresh for our returning customers. A lot of people are first time customers, but for the returning customers, we want to keep it fresh with the way things look. We got things kind of color coordinate right now, yeah. uh, but it won't always be like that. We will uh, change it up here and there. And uh, we got the art on the wall, uh, bringing that culture from uh, some of the greatest from Indianapolis. And yeah. right now we're working with about 10 teammates uh, from uh, people just working the floor, register, uh, the ones that's coming to help us clean up early before everyone else. Yeah. Um, and like what, what types of like trades and characteristics are you looking for when you're hiring people to be a part of your culture? I'm looking for someone who, uh, people who already have motion, who already have, who are aspiring to be great uh, in uh, certain artistic fields as well, because realistically, this is not a job where I can pay all of your bills. So this is a job that will really be a platform, a stepping stone for you to be something greater. Yeah. So the mission here is for uh, 
you to use me and me to use you to be great. Yeah. And uh, if you have those type of characteristics, we can be married. Uh, if you can take care of the baby while I'm not around like it is your baby, then we might can be married. Yeah. If uh, you uh, are providing that type of customer care, that customer service, then uh, you could be a potential teammate. Yeah, Look so it's like greatness. It's like enrolling people that believe in the vision. For right? sure, and it's seasonal. Uh, some teammates won't be around for forever, and I'm okay with that because uh, sometimes we come into people's life for a purpose, and then we leave people's life for a purpose as well. Yeah, and being seasonal is okay. The sacrifices and, that are being made to be successful uh, with the Napper Nothing brand aren't only made by Antonio Maxi. I had to figure out a way to delegate and add pieces to the puzzle that actually fit teammates. I had to learn. Uh, doing it by myself would take a little longer, but I could be a little more efficient if I allowed people to be a part of my dream. It was okay. And one thing I want to touch on before we move forward, you had mentioned like everything in here is local. It local is. Local artists, yes. local creators from the art that's on the walls, the hats that's on the racks, and all of the apparel that's around us within this space here. Like you have targeted creatives and apparel lines that are created by individuals that reside here in Naptown, Indianapolis, Indiana, right? Like, what are some of the things that you're looking for when it comes to apparels being able to be featured here, here in Nap and Nothing? Motion. I'm looking for a brand to already- gotta be about that action. Yes, yeah, like yeah. already or moving and grooving within the community already. I'm looking for quality. I like when people uh, want to approach me about being in this shop, bring your pieces in because I'm a touchy feely type of guy. Yeah. I want to see how much uh, do your t-shirts or shorts weigh. You know what I'm saying? I want to see, feel the screen print or the embroidery that you're using. I want to tell me uh, what does your brand stand for? What does it mean? Uh, what's your why? What's your reason behind what you're doing? Yeah. Uh, what is your trajectory? What are your goals? Where do you see a brand being in the next three years, in the next five years? Why would me and you be a good marriage? Uh, how could you see uh, us benefiting from each other? Yeah, so it's very intentional. It's not just, hey, I'm gonna put these clothes on a rack and hope that somebody's interested in them and purchasing them. It's like, hey, we gotta have alignment, right? We, we just gotta be on the same important page. important because I can fill it up with more pieces from my brand the brands that are already in here being successful. So the space is very important. I don't want to uh, take up space with things that aren't ready. Yeah. Can you kind of show us, like, what, what are some of the brands that you're showcasing here? So, of course, the shop is called Napper Nothing. It's yeah. about repping the hometown to the fullest. So we got some new pieces in from the Napper Nothing brand. This is the interstate piece right okay. here. Uh, it's popping. It did very well one from, of those, for us. We did like a from nap from Indianapolis capsule. Yeah. It did pretty well for us. Standard Slum House uh, t-shirt. This is his standard logo as well, Slum House Originals, which is one of the biggest brands here in uh, Indianapolis as well. He's been a, a part of our journey almost the whole uh, 10 piece, the whole decade. So shout out to Slum House okay. as we uh, work our way over here. Okay. Right here. Right here. Okay. This is the Black Sheep Collective. Uh, he's been doing well, him and his wife, uh, Christian-based brand. Byron, uh, my guy, he Byron. was on season one. Man, he's the, he's that guy. Yeah. Not only do, uh, is he a great, uh, does he have a great clothing line, but he's a great graphic designer, he's a great father, he's yeah. a great guy. Yeah. Uh, but Black Sheep Collective, uh, one of the biggest brands here in Indianapolis as well, very fresh. They're very intentional too. on what they put on uh, their garments and is very high quality. So shout out to Black Sheep Collective. Okay. As we work right here behind you, more pieces from the Slum House Collective. Uh, they drop a lot of different uh, capsules and a lot of different logos and different pieces. As you see right here, uh, the Mario movie dropped not too long ago. So we did a Slum House Originals in the coin uh, design. Then he got a Bad Angel, Good Devil design. Uh, then we got, uh, just a motorsport t-shirt. So, I mean, he has a variety of different logos, different colorways, different weights of his t-shirts and things of that nature. Yeah. Good brand. So are you, I know you have like a design background. You're a very passionate artist. Are you like hands-on in creating a lot of these designs for the apparel? I'm very hands-on. But I also give my graphic designers a uh, creative freedom to be great. It just depends on which uh, assignment it is. I may hit them up and be like, yo, uh, this, like 
I go by Maxi, so I got this like Mario flip that I did called Super Maxi. I'm like, a, can you uh, flip the Super Mario joint? I'm gonna let you be great. It's a lot of different Mario things that you could flip, Mario World, yeah. uh, Yoshi, this, this, and that. I just give people ideas and then let them ro roam and be free. If I don't like s certain things, I will ask for it to be fixed, but most of the times, uh, I'm working with them because they're great and I they trust what they, they do. They have full autonomy to create what they want. Yeah, so it go, it works both ways. Sometimes I'm very hands-on. I'm very hands-on. I order everything. I pick out the colorways. I dictate what goes on the garment, but sometimes I let uh, my guys be great when they are actually making the design. So is, is production happening in-house here? You're creating all the apparel here? Some. Okay. Some. Uh, we produce some here and then some. I'm outsourcing, but it's always local. Yeah. Uh, everyone that's doing any work for us is right here in Indianapolis. Yeah, man. I love that. So, so with that being said, right, I know one thing about retail is that in many ways it's often cyclical, right? There's seasons. There's up months, there's months where you have high sales, and then there may be months where sales have declined. How are you able to manage that effectively? Not only from a business standpoint, but mentally and emotionally, because everybody ain't built for that, right? To, to have, you know, business where it kind of trends high and then it can have those hard falls. But to be able to sustain that, you got to have a strategy, you got to have the proper mindset, and you got to persevere. Like, what what are you doing in those moments when it seems cyclical? Like, how are you staying focused? Uh, it's a roller coaster. Uh, you just got to ride it out. Yeah. You got to document. Documentation is important. Uh, I want to know exactly what I sold this same time last year, then I need to pull my paperwork out. Uh, I made a thousand dollars this same day last year. I want to make a thousand and one dollars or better. Yeah. Uh, I want to figure out uh, if uh, Thursdays are a slow day for me, then let's figure out what type of sales or things of that nature we can do to increase uh, or generate a little more income. But the yeah. only way we can do that is being strategic by keeping notes, uh, tracking our sales, properly doing our taxes, yeah. uh, having an accountant, uh, just being on top of our paperwork, doing our due diligence on being good businessmen and women. Okay. Overcome my fear by just running towards it. You don't know what the future will bring, but the way that my mind is set up, I look at everything with a positive outlook. I know we're going to win. I know we're going to be successful. It's already written. And I pray. And God said I can do it. And my wife said I can do it. And my teammates meet me here every day. That's how I overcome this it. This is, uh, like I told you, we got the shop color coordinated. So we got the reds right here. We got the greens right here. We flow into some of these golds and yellows. I uh, threw that orange on top of that mustard. I think that's popping. I'm a color guy, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Then I like that olive green sitting on top of that orange. That I feel like that works in any season because really it's a fall color, but it's so fresh that it can work in the summer and spring as well. Yeah. I'm a color guy. So then we just keep it moving over here. I also got this Naptown Legends. I like to represent nice. Naptown, Indianapolis to Mike the Epps, fullest. Be swell. Come on. It's on. Samson. Big O. Yeah. Pierre. Let's go. Indianapolis Legends. Yeah, so not only uh, are the t-shirts unisex for the most part, but we do women crops and things of that, that nature, women uh, apparel. Uh, but we got the kiddos as well. We take okay. care of the buckos. Okay. Uh, we got a whole section for them. Uh, we got it color coordinated as well. Uh, nice. We started toddlers. Uh, we do, uh, sometimes we do infants as well, but a lot of things are custom when it comes to those sizes. But uh, we, we're getting them together as well. Uh, as you see, uh, I told you that uh, that olive green on that orange is hidden. Yeah. In uh, Slum House, he did those uh, coins, t-shirts as well. So not only does Nap or Nothing have uh, things for the kiddos, but uh, the other brands in here as well. How, how are you like, keeping a pulse on the movement of fashion. I'm not a fashionable guy. I'm not a fashion kind of sewer myself, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But it seems That's as if question. you're very astute, right? Are you are you just kind of in tune with it? Of course, you being in the, in the music industry, you kind of see how things are unfolding and different trends that may happen in the culture. But like, how are you getting a pulse on like, what's moving and what's coming next? I, and then implementing that into your designs. I keep a post on the culture by traveling, mm -hmm. uh, by shopping with my friends who have clothing stores. Uh, we go to this Vegas show called uh, Magic 
uh, down in Las Vegas, maybe twice a year, biggest clothing convention in the country. And uh, they let us know about all the pieces that are coming uh, the next season for fall or the next seasons for spring. Okay. Uh, and that, I mean, every brand, whether it's Tommy, uh, Aku, uh, Polo, uh, to brands that you don't know about. So that's a way I stay ahead of the curve. Uh, and it's, this is art, right? And art has no rules, right? So mm. it's like, I can just do whatever I want. That's the good thing about being in this field, being in this area. I don't have to abide by anybody else's rules. Mm. Whatever create, creative greatness comes to my mind, I, I let it out. Yeah. And everything is not a hit. Everything doesn't work, but uh, sometimes it may work a little better later. Sometimes it may work greater with a different colorway, things of that nature. So trial and error. Like, what do you, how do you know, how do you know a piece of merchandise or a design works? It works. Of course, people are purchasing it, but uh -huh. is there like a feeling that you get when you're creating it and then you're like out the gate, hey, this is gonna be a hitter. I feel like all of them are hitters, but you only know if it's a hitter or if it's selling out. Right. Feel me? Like you gotta pay attention to what sizes are going first. You gotta pay attention to what colorways of the exact same logo is working. You gotta pay attention to uh, what type of customer is coming forward. Will it be uh, a potential for a returning customer? Is it a potential for uh, it to sell out if I got more sizes than this? Man, it's just really about paying attention. Everything mm. is about paying attention. Uh, Paying attention. Bro. Listen to me. You got to pay attention to what the customers want. You got to be able to read the room. Every They might not say it verbally right. sometimes. You know what I mean? You just got to be able to read things. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very interesting. My so, passion for fashion is just exploding because it's, it's a new world. Uh, I like dressing. I like being fresh. I got it from my mom. She's a dresser. She likes to put it on. Uh, she's a fancy little lady and it rubbed off on me. It fuels me. Uh, I can wake up and look forward to doing something with fashion. And I think uh, it's gonna be like that for years to come. I'm embracing these different angles, uh, whether I'm creating my own brand, helping others create their brand. Uh, either one, I'm with it's interesting it. that you say that because I think that's extremely valuable, except especially for somebody that's not only in retail, but just any designer, period. But what advice would you give to somebody that's looking to maybe start their own apparel line, open up their own retail location, or maybe a boutique store, right, that is exclusive towards specific brands? Because of your experience, what advice would you offer to that person? Believe in your brand more than anybody else does only had teammates that is going to be on that level with belief. Everybody's not going to believe in things as much as you do, but I want them to be as close as possible. Wake up ready to work every day. Someone said, uh, they don't know many billionaires that don't get up and still work mm -hmm. every day. So, uh, I apply that to what I have going on. And I think everyone else should do the same thing. It's important to keep the fire in your belly. Mm. And sometimes you gotta find people to motivate you. Sometimes you gotta find things that motivate you. Sometimes uh, you gotta look for motivation in different areas, but it's important to stay motivated because the journey that we're on, a lot of people are on that exact same journey. A lot of yeah. people are doing the exact same things that we're doing. So what's gonna make us stand out? Yeah. Sometimes it's our passion. Sometimes uh, it's the graphic designers are doper than the other ones that other people are working with. Sometimes you have excess Asset, access to greater quality of clothing or uh, different uh, wholesalers or uh, someone just made you a, a greater website, but it's important that you find your niche. I want, I want to dive deeper on that, Maxi, because I mean, you bring up something that I think can be extremely valuable for individuals, especially those that are looking to start something. Because part of being a creative is having the courage to put yourself out there to express your artistry, right? And when you mentioned you gotta believe in your art, even when other people don't believe in it, right? That's a packed statement. Like, I'm quite sure there's been moments when you've created a piece of music, right? Whether it was some lyrics that you put out or a piece of design that people didn't believe in, right? But you stuck with it. Take us down that mental journey, right? That maybe even emotional roller coaster ride that may come with that. How are you able to consistently bet on yourself and continue 
to put and express the art that you create. Looking at the glass half full. Mm. You gotta look at it half full. You gotta look at the people that are supporting you opposed to the people that aren't supporting you. You gotta look at the things that are working for you opposed to the things that aren't working for you. I mean, you can compare both, but I don't, even if it's greater in this area, I don't never let it weigh on me too much because I just flip it over and I look at the glass half full. Keep it moving. Gotta keep it positive no matter what. No yeah. matter what obstacles are in the way, what hurdles, uh, you're on this journey for a reason. So, with that being said, we're here. Massa, how long have you guys been in this location? Six months, going on seven months now. Ooh. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Let's go. And downtown Indianapolis, too. Man, don't get no primary real estate than this, man. Yeah. So you got a lot of foot traffic that's coming across here, yep. and you're capitalizing on that and building a new fan base, new, new, a new role of loyal customers. But my question is, where do you see this going? What's your vision? Where are you taking that right now? Um, we're going to leave the door open for others to walk in and be great here. Uh, hopefully others leave the door open for me to walk in and see what's on the other side. Uh, use this as a stepping stone and just be greater. Uh, keep working in the over trajectory with things. Yeah. I'm looking forward to working with new creators, different collabs, looking forward to All Star coming here downtown. Yeah, that's gonna be huge. Yeah, big events coming downtown. I wanna capitalize off that. Uh, it's Napa Nun. It's just not about Antonio Maxi. It's about Indianapolis. Yeah. So I'm just looking forward to taking care of the community, being being a community soldier, and just seeing what's next. I feel like uh, we will have more stores opening eventually. Okay. I feel like we got something good going on, and I and it's room for improvement. Yeah. With it being successful, there's still room. There's for always room for improvement. Yeah, so Biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Ooh, right. Well, I like that. <laughs> uh, so I see things working. Uh, I see uh, more blessings yeah. on the horizon, uh, but I'm ready to put the work in for it. Yeah. yeah. And w one thing that I want to make note of that I truly admire about the work that you're doing, one of which is how you strategically capitalize on moments, right? How you mentioned, hey, NBA All-Star Game is coming up. So we're creating a campaign of designs for that specific event, right? Things that are happening downtown, you're building designs around that, right? To help build that pride and that, that dignity for the city of Indianapolis. And people are following along in that, they're buying into that, and then you're picking up even more customers. That's one thing that I do admire. The other thing, man, most importantly, is how you're opening up doors for other creatives, other designers, other people that are looking to create something from scratch here in the city of Indianapolis, right? That's like important. That in and of itself, man, speaks on, again, the pride that you have, right? To not outsource to other cities, but instead say, hey, we're going to keep it in-house and everybody around me is going to eat, man. So I admire you for that. Keep up the work, bro. I'm looking forward to it. Maxi yeah, is man. highly focused on the customer experience. Like he's very intentional about what individuals experience when they walk through those doors. So to help him out and provide some strategies, I invited my great friend, Rachel Johnson. She's a visual merchandiser and ultimately she helps retailers tell stories through their apparel. She shared a number of different insights and tools and strategies that Maxi can begin to incorporate into his business. It's important that when individuals walk through that space, not only do they see your products, but they also gain a deeper understanding of the stories behind that brand. This one I'm meeting right here. Yeah. Rachel, hola. great day Hi. to you. How's How you feeling? Going? It's good. Hola, good. hola. Hi. I want to introduce you to my brother from another mother, Antonio Maxi. He is the owner, founder, and the leader of culture here at mm -hmm. Nap of, or Nothing. Um, now he has recently came into this space here, moved downtown on Mass Ave. Massive space, a lot of square footage. It is. And his goal is to maximize the entire space here and create a customer experience. And I know this is your expertise, okay. by the way, Maxi. Okay. She <laughs> is a visual merchandiser extraordinaire, extraordinaire. And I know you have a lot of different strategies to provide in that space. But what insights would you give to Maxi to kind of maximize this place to create a better experience? So it is a big space. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, the challenge is you're selling graphic tees in a ginormous space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
One thing that really captured me when I walk in is this beautiful sign. Um, I think coming off the street on Mass Ave, you're going to have people on Friday nights just hitting up the spot. And it's free advertising. People could, you could put that bench over there, kind of clear off that stuff and maybe do some hats or some clean merchandising. Mm -hmm. And that could be a place where people take selfies and then post hashtag Naptown, Nap or nothing, you know. And that's again, free advertising. Could also be kind of like a chill lounge spot. Mm -hmm. I see you got checkers and chess over here. We do. So I would almost create a zone here when people walk in to just kind of blow up your spot and maybe take your little checkout station over to this area okay. so that you still have someone posted up by the door and this is kind of free of clutter and just really clean and inviting. I like it. Yeah. yeah. You have a little rug over there you could throw in there. Throw the napkin Just over scream it. Shout it from the mountains, yep. you know? Yep. Branded. Um, yes. yes. Your branded spot. Yes. So another... These are, all, these are all ideas that don't cost a dime, neither. They do. These are all little things you can do for free mm -hmm. that will just elevate this experience. You are in a very competitive location. It is. You know? Yep. <laughs> you have to protect that. Yep. So you're a creative person, obviously. Just it's a different way of showing that creativity. And it sounds like a great way. I'm always open to more greatness. Uh, so I like that. Yeah. I think people, and it's interesting that you even said that because uh, when we first opened the shop, this was the selfie area. Really? We had the bench right there. Uh, you either stand up or sit on the bench, take your pictures. We had hats so, and then we had sneakers up there as well. Yeah, that's great. So the great. store's been through its phases, but I do like that idea. Yeah. Yep. And you know, it's, looks like a really custom piece too so it was, uh, my guy byron elliott had uh designed it with a uh, cp uh and being cp and my dad helped put it together so nice. i'm grateful for that that's awesome yes you could even kind of take that theme as your sort of inspiration for any sort of decor that you want to do here and i would try to keep it really cohesive mm -hmm. um but we'll talk about that I want to kind of get to the layout portion okay. because you have some really beautiful feature fixtures here and you know you are already using them to kind of divide the space but I think there's maybe a more effective way to do it um, but they're great they look custom as well they were custom yeah. made um, my and dad they, and CP built those out as well. Yeah, I love those. And you have just enough. They're large. They take up space. The one behind the column has a lot of height. So generally in retail, you know, you want to think of this space kind of as a grid, right? You could just quarter it off, okay? And then what you want to create sort of usually in the middle, centrally located, would be like a focal point or what we might refer to as a runway where we tell story. So you have a lot of brands going on, you know, a ton of awesome graphics, but this could be the place where you mix them and kind of showcase your best of the best. And, you know, once you have that layout, so I would say bring that larger fixture off the column. So it's creating a wall, okay. a feature wall, and then use one of these to kind of guide the customer in, throw a table or two, maybe a table with the nesters, have clusters of, forms mm -hmm. and then you're going to add you know hats to the table that makes sense you know a mix of brands i like that I something can't, I'll, relevant i'll be interested in seeing like which way you want to turn that so i would turn it this way so you have a feature wall mm -hmm. and then use these smaller fixtures to kind of guide okay the runway right and then throw a table in the middle some forms maybe that tree would be nice in there mm. sort of like telling all the brand stories and the best of the best you know, um, and then what we call cross merchandising it. So throwing in the hats, throwing, you know, outfitting, outfitting, put those varsity jackets up there mm -hmm. with, you know, the tie dye t-shirt and maybe a, a hoodie. Yeah, I liked it. And I could teach you some folds to do on the tables. 
to kind of bring that to life. Have a great day. Thanks for stopping in. Likewise. Um, and then for the sides, I would keep that brand centric. So outside of that runway, I would center tables with those bars and maybe you have your 317, you have your black sheep, mm -hmm. you know, kind of quartered off and with their own merchandise as well. Mm -hmm. So that just really simplifies things for the customer. You don't want to bombard them, but you don't want to underwhelm them. And that's like a perfect balance, you right know? So you have clear and concise, and then you have your big story, your focal point, okay? Right. And through your layout, you're creating that journey. You're shepherding the customer where you want them to go, yeah. you know? And then making things really easy to read and understand. There's a lot of psychology behind that. Well, there is. It's basically nonverbal communication mm -hmm. is what visual is. So it's not, it's not rocket science, but it is rocket science. <laughs> Clothing science. It is. It's all so, scientific. Um, but it can be fun and creative. So even with like the way that he's folded many of the apparel on so top of those. We'll talk that that speaks to what I call standards. Um, I'm gonna teach you about my friend the clipboard and how to do a board fold. Cool. Because in in my business of retail. If it's a t-shirt and it has a graphic, it gets board folded. Mm. It does, you know? So you can highlight what's on the t-shirt. Yes, but also keep your stacks so consistent and crisp. And that really adds what I call perceived value. Mm -hmm. It shows that you care. It shows that that little bit of love that you're going to give shows that you're passionate and you care. Yeah. And you elevate the product. Just enough, you know? Yep, I agree. It, it does a lot for the product. Are these onesies, these uh, singles here that you have stacked, they're like kind of the end of the run? Yeah, these are like one-offs. These are the last of the Mohicans. These are all buy one, get one. So what I have to say about that is those have value. Those, maybe think about not doing them buy one, get one. Maybe think about creating a space for those on their own. And you could throw up a sign that says last chance, you know, because I think people want those. They do. They're, They're kind of special. They're the last, right? They are very special. So you're not doing them any favors by piling them on top there. Do people shop them? They've been doing awesome. Do they, how do they shop them? Do they just pull down the stack uh, and make a big mess on the floor? Uh, sometimes they make a mess. That's a part of it as well. And then sometimes we beat them to it. And we just help them with their <laughs> sizes. It's separated by sizes. So most of the time we just try to help them. OK. And that's awesome. You guys, you know, this is such a welcoming environment. Um, I was here the other day and like so friendly, so welcoming, so helpful. But there's going to be times where maybe you're busy, right? Maybe you have several people in the store. Maybe you get theft. Maybe, I mean, I'm sure this is Mass Ave, you know. Uh, I would take those down, hang them, put them on their own area, and make them special. And run promotions if you want, but I think they're special enough to sell for what they're worth. And then I have some other ideas that I'm going to bring out that I think could actually even take that a step further and add some height and interest to that area. Um, there's just so much you could do with that plank and the bar, but I think side hanging tees would not be my first choice. If you are going to side hang something, do it with your hoodies because they're bulky. They will fill that bar. You know, they are colorful. So I think they would be a better choice to do on the side hang bars. The other thing I'll say is the hangers. Um, if we're talking about adding perceived value, you know, maybe put all the dark hangers with a certain brand and just keep them pure to where their area is. So instead of mixing them. Well, Rachel, I'm, I'm a visual person, right? You're describing all of these different strategies and approaches to visual merchandising. Maxi, 
would you give her your blessing to be able to come in here and implement and integrate some of these tools and strategies? Let's see what it looks like. Want to do that? Mm -hmm. You down for that, Rachel? Oh, I'm, I'm down. Look, look, down. Her, this is, like, her ears I'm prepared. Her right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do it. Let's do All it. All right, let's okay. do it. I'm just gonna set these here for now. There, so we'll take the ones that are just kind of less depth. Let's do those guys. So, but these are great because I think they're gonna add a lot of color. So let's do that one. Mm. Yeah, that's good. So this is filling the bar. You see fullness, you see color. You know, it's not just hoodies, it's tie-dye, it's interest, it's varsity jackets. Kind of like you're not just gonna buy one t-shirt, two t-shirts, you're gonna buy a hoodie, a t-shirt, a jacket, and maybe another hoodie because it has a different logo. So that is the psychology here. Then I would like to get this stuff off so I can show you maybe what I would do there. A good spot, maybe at that. All right. So these are just So now we're kind of telling a story. We're gonna get some more hats. Let's see. I love these hats with the little pins on them. Yeah. We just wanna kind of bring color, you know, variety. Um, and then you have height. Now when I put those tees in the frames, I did not yet know what we were doing here. So that's just an example, but I would kind of probably try to feature graphics that you have on this bar so they know what they're looking at. And then they see all the beautiful color and the bar is full and it's sized and the hangers are all consistent. <laughs> For sure. Um, and so do you see how now it's a focal point? Yep. Where before it was white tees on a bar, it's a lot different, right? Um, and that didn't take very long. Nope. And it's very interesting. Yeah, it's telling a story. Yes. So that's one way. Um, Where are the uh, shirts in? What kind of frames are those? So I, I took them from my job, but I think you could buy those on Amazon mm -hmm. for very cheap. So just kind of look for the bigger frames. Is it a, what kind of frame is it though? It's is it? just a wood frame with paint. Um, and then, it's very cheap. It's like stapled together. It has a foam core, and then you put down these little things, and voila. Yeah, I like it. This is just a piece of plastic. It's not glass. So I would look for a bunch of different sizes to kind of create that cluster. Yeah. And then you can showcase your graphics and make it art at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, I'm not, a, I'm not a visual merchandiser at all, but I'm thinking you can almost get a variety of those different frames, mm -hmm. like one wood, one black and then different areas you have. I would keep, different well, yes, I like that. I would keep them consistent to the area. But like, like you were saying, you definitely want to identify each brand, each zone that you're in. And that's a great way to do it by maybe changing up the colors for each brand. Um, definitely makes you feel like you're in a different area, right? So that's, yeah. I love that. Small business owners really need to keep their customer in mind because the customer is basically keeping you in business. And that's what you always have to remember is do everything for your customer. And when you do, do these merchandising things, it's actually good customer service. You are doing justice to your product and you are doing um, a service to your customer and they will remember that. They will come back, they will tell their friends and your business grows that way.
when you're in a space, you have to utilize your space to communicate things non-verbally to your customer. Tell them what your brand's about. Show them what your brand's about. One thing that I admire about Maxi is that he is a master of experimentation. I believe that's the way he approaches his business. And of course, to be an entrepreneur, you have to be a risk taker. You have to be willing to try new things, adopt new methods, and in some cases you may have to pivot. But then there's those that consistently push the envelope. These are they that redefine possibilities. These are the individuals that we label to be trendsetters. And when I think of Maxi, I see him edging himself into that category. Maxi's love and pride for the city of Indianapolis is what drives his business, his music, and his artistry. And I'm looking forward to the extraordinary things, like witnessing what they're going to create, him and his entire Nap or Nothing team the things that they're gonna to do to help move and push the culture forward. Right along Massachusetts Avenue, I'm a proud resident of our city today when Nap or Nothing finds itself firmly planted here on Mass Avenue. Yes, sir. We got a long way to go, but this is sure, certainly a step in the right direction. And the fact that Nap or Nothing and Maxi is collaborating and working with other entrepreneurs, helping build them up, this is a culture that will prosper, that will not only survive, but thrive. And it's long overdue. So on behalf of the city of Indianapolis, Maxi, let me just, you know, how can he not be successful? 2006 North Central grad. <laughs> Musician. Let's go. Entrepreneur. Wow. He's got everything. <laughs> um, we're proud of you. We're happy for you. I'm here to help you uh, kick this off in the right way. And God bless all of you for being here and supporting, come back, buy a lot of wear and support local and black owned businesses whenever, however you can. Our city will be better for it. Thank you. It was like one of the biggest blessings. I'm so grateful for Daniel. Uh, for him opening that door for me and allowing me to grow. I'm thankful for Lafayette Square Mall because uh, if I would have started anywhere else, I don't know if I would still even be here. Uh, it took those baby steps to be able to uh, strive and, and run. I think maybe the newest, biggest challenge maybe doing it for the city and not letting the city down like, I don't think we've ever had something like this downtown Indianapolis or just in Indianapolis, period. It's a lot of brands that are doing awesome, phenomenal right now. There's gonna be a lot of brands that come behind us. And I just wanna make sure that the foundation is very solid, it's very strong. Uh, I wanna make sure we open doors and leave them open for others to come in those rooms. I always said never nothing would be a stepping stone for something greater and I didn't know exactly what it would be, but for sure I could see it being a stepping stone for for just artistry, whether you uh, make music, uh, whether you uh, are a creator of a clothing brand, whether you draw, paint, uh, or sculpture, do sculptures, or a muralist, it's a place it's a home for you at 525 Massachusetts Avenue. This won't be the only location as well. Uh, like we're serving a different demographic here and I feel like it's more demographics to be served on this side of town, that side of town as well. And that will open the door for other uh, creative artists, like-minded people as well. Shout out to everyone who's came, uh, supported us via online or actually put those 10 toes down and came into the shop. Super grateful. 
speaking on behalf of Slum House, speaking on behalf of Poverty Sucks, speaking on behalf of Nap or Nothing, uh, beyond grateful. We're gonna do our due diligence to continue to serve you guys, provide quality, provide freshness, put Nap on, cause that's what it's about. What's on, what's on the front of that shirt? The OG's saying this ain't nothing new to one. And all the new school is saying this is fuel them. But we need the two of them to learn from each other's the only way we move. Yeah. We ain't playing games, this ain't just gonna fade away We just trying to make it one more day like Sinead O'Plain yeah. I know one day we could be amazing We just need to rise up in the middle of eight ten. We gon' rise, we gon' shine Yeah, we gon' rise stories that was like June um probably like late summer bike ride I was just riding a bike and I'm like a mobile bookstore it just kind of like came to me in that way and from that moment on I was like tunnel vision I'm like what you know I didn't know how I was gonna design it I didn't know anything I just knew that um, it was gonna be exciting it's gonna be you know the stories that my children love that I love um, it's going to make it accessible, and I knew that um, it was going to happen. 